Oh, hey, this is Matt Fetcher from Audio Kit. Let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Today I have an interview with Andy Bull. He's had an amazing career. Before the internet was even invented, he started out writing software for the world famous Akai samplers. Then in the early 2000s, he created a popular shareware synth called Cell Synth. And if that isn't enough, now he's using his decades of experience as an engineer and musician to make amazing apps like Layer, an award-winning iOS synth that sounds lush. I mean, if you've got an idea and you think it's going to be good, do it and go for it. That's just some of the great advice Andy drops on us today. So let's get started. Hey, Andy. Hey. <laughs> yeah, hi, Matt. Hey, it's so great to have you here. Do you want to tell people a little bit more about your latest software, Layer? Which I built because uh, I wanted a decent synth to carry around <laughs> in my pocket, basically, rather than having to carry a bunch of bags, you know, to gigs. Oh, yeah. So you're a musician and engineer by trade. So you, you're saying yeah. you kind of built this as the synth that you wanted to have. I mean, I was using synths on iOS for a long time, actually, on the iPad. Um, but I always had so many troubles with MIDI and, and, and and apps that would half work and half not work and things that would crash during a performance. And, and so, I don't know, I just thought, well, I'll, I'll try and make something for myself. And then that, it just kind of evolved from there. It took a year. And, uh, yeah, a, a year yeah. well worth it. Uh, you know, when I first heard the sound demos, I like, I sent the link to everyone I knew. I'm like, check out this new synth, this is amazing. And like bought a copy that day. So lush sounding for those who haven't heard it yet. And it seems like you also, I mean, you're a sound designer yourself, but you also enrolled like some of the best sound designers from iOS, Red Sky Lullaby and Bryce Beasley and those fellows. So how'd that come up about? Well, actually, Bryce contacted me wow. um, quite, quite early on. Um, and we got on quite well. We've got a very similar sense of humor, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and he, 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 he was totally into the idea of doing presets and so I just let him go for it and we and it, as you know he's produced some of the most incredible sounds of, you know he, 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 it blew my mind the first set he produced and I thought I, 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 thought, I, knew, I, I thought I knew what Leia was capable of and uh, <laughs> um, but uh, Bryce, Bryce changed all that. But I remember watching that video like five times in a row. I was just the kind cinematics of, video. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it's mm. so it's so dramatic, uh, mm. you know, and his uh, sense of aesthetic and just the whole package, the way he presented the presets. Now, Bryce is a professional graphics designer as well, so he's a, you know, he's he's got he's, he's, it's all there really. <laughs> And um, Stuart Red Sky Lullaby, yeah, again, contacted me, and, and 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 you know, I'd love to offer them loads of money and say, hey guys, come on, have loads of money. To do this. But, but uh, it wasn't possible at that time. Um, so yeah, I was lucky. Some people believe that apps you release them once and then they make money and then they don't make any money again. Yeah. But, but the last. I don't know how many months completely redesigning layer the same sense so everyone gets a free update and you don't get any more money from that so what was your motivation to do the same sense instead of just creating a new one it sounds like you don't do this for the money you do it for the love of making well, it it's a bit for the money i mean it has to make money otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we don't survive here you know <laughs> but, but we're, in, we're in quite a lucky position here where, where you know i've retired now basically so so um uh, and we've got very low overheads so we can just about survive on, on the money that the apps bring in. But I mean, if it, if it ever stopped coming in, we'd have to stop making apps. It'd be as simple as that. But we are putting the price up at the end of May, so. Uh, oh, okay, so for those watching, you know, buy Layer now before it's too late. And you heard Andy, if you don't buy his apps, he's not gonna be able to make any more. So support independent developers like Andy so you can have Absolutely. these awesome sounding iOS apps. Tell people how you got started making iOS apps, because a lot of people watching, they want to make their first iOS app, and they don't really know how to start. So could you tell us how you got started, and maybe some advice for people who want to make their own music apps? When I started, 
which was, well, 25 or six, seven years ago, something like that. Okay, so step one, start 25 years ago. <laughs> well, no, 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 I mean, but when I started, it was, there was no choice. You, you had, basically, you had C or basic, <laughs> okay. and you had a little, a little computer, you know, and, and you just sort of learnt slowly and bought books. And I mean, I bought about a thousand pounds worth of technical books, both, both for my, my, both for DSP and for 3D graphics, which was my other passion. But I think starting now, where, where would you start now? I mean, if I was starting now, you know, and I was just coming out of college or music technology college or whatever, I just finished a degree and I want to make my first app, audio kit. Right, yeah, so yes, they have to start with something. Because, because it's so complicated. It's the, 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 the process of building an app is, is quite huge, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so if, if you're going to learn DSP, you've still got to learn C, in my opinion. You've got to know C. There's, there's, you can't get away and write DSP without knowing C at a very low level. Um, but, you know, apart from that, which language do you choose? Swift, Java, base, uh, whatever, Objective C. That, that choices I didn't have to make. Um, and things like Audio Kit make it simpler to get into it. And, and, and some of the books that are around these days, but you're going to have to spend thousands of pounds on books by, by the time you get an expert, if you're going to go along that route. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you have to go up the rungs of the ladder one, one step at a time. And when I started, it was much easier because there wasn't any ladder. <laughs> yeah. There's one, there one way only. But yeah, yeah, exactly. And we, we, we kind of created the steps as we went up it. <laughs> uh, 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 but, but now, of course, it's, it, it's, it's, it's like Jacob's ladder, isn't it? It's, 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 it? The choice is enormous. What, what, why do I even start learning framework-wise? I, I think that might paralyze people from getting started. They don't want to learn the wrong thing. Yeah, feel like they wasted time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, think, I think if you're going to go for iOS, then obviously learn Swift. Um, you have to learn Swift because that's that's the that's the that's the user interface you're dealing with there. So I mean, Swift's a nice language too. I quite, I quite like it. Oh yeah. Um, so you do all do you do all the interface work and layer in Swift? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. I didn't know if you were using Juice or something like that or. No, no, no. I, I, it's all. It's all. Um, all the all the user all the view controllers are, are coded. I, I don't even use interface builder actually. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was a habit we got into at TouchPress, which I, which which I just kind of followed on. And and, and uh, if I was to start now, I think I would definitely choose something like Audio Kit or, or, or a, a framework like that, that. You have to learn. You have to know, and you have to have a plan. You have to have a kind of vision, perhaps. And stick with it, and don't let people put you off. <laughs> oh gosh, that's that's some of the best advice I've heard. Uh, you know, I really think that's true. You know, people will criticize what you're doing, and they'll, and they'll, and they'll, they'll say, "Oh, no one wants that." Oh, I don't understand what you're doing, and and mostly it's I don't understand what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, basically, if you, if you just stick to what you believe. And if you've got an idea and you think it's going to be good, do it and go for it. Um, uh, and you'll learn along the post, you'll learn along the way. If you're just starting, you will learn along the way. You will learn that if you want to create a, a polyphonic synth, you first got to create a sound. You know? Yeah, start with the oscillator and keep building step yeah. by step. Those little yeah. wins. Yeah. Keep your eyes focused on why you started in the first place, your, your original yeah. vision. And, and, and optimization is another thing to keep your eye on. I think it's a, you know, Concentrate on learning, learning low-level optimization uh, uh, because it's extremely important. The more you can optimize things, the more you can get the device to do, obviously. And, but then it, it doesn't happen overnight. You learn it over a period of time, and you make loads and loads and loads of mistakes. But they don't really matter because if you, you know, it's, it's like creating any piece of art or work of art in, in a lot of ways. I, I, I see programming like this as, as being very creative. It's a creative process rather than being um, rather than a technical process. You can learn the technical parts while being creative. So over time, you become more, more full. You, 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 it fills you out. You, you become a better, you know, better programmer over time. But I, I, it's just like I said, you know, when I started, it was so much simpler. But also, I had some good tutors as well. 
Wow, that's super cool. And uh, can we talk a little bit about like your past work and like studios and working for some of like you worked for Akai too, didn't you as well? Yeah, like, some yeah, stuff that. Stuff. like that's incredibly interesting to me and I'm sure for people watching. Eight or nine or ten years I was working for Akai. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm back when it was Akai Professional, but not the company it is now, which is a very, very different company indeed. It's not, it's not even, the, they're not even related. Um, uh, they were, it was kind of, it's a long, complicated story. <laughs> okay. I won't tell you the whole thing, but, but back then it was called Akai Professional, uh, and we, they made samplers mainly, uh, and uh, the old MPC. Right, yes. Uh, but I worked on mainly on the samplers and, and the digital recorders. Those made a lot of great records. Didn't they? There was a point, I think, when there was an Akai sampler in every single studio in the world. I don't, I don't think there was a, <laughs> I don't think that's a, a, a false claim, actually. <laughs> I think there was at least one Akai sampler in every studio on the planet at one point. They did, it, just, it just suddenly collapsed because laptops did take over it, that year. That was about 1991, I think, something like that. So maybe uh -oh. 19, was, was Cell sent in 2001 or was that 1991? No, no, 2000, 1999, 2001, that's right. Yeah, uh, 2001. Because yeah. I do remember cell synth, uh, believe it or not, I was writing software for Windows 95 at the time, uh, <laughs> a company called Digitonics making drum machines, actually about the same time as Hammerhead and all that stuff, but uh, oh, yeah. ours wasn't as popular. But I remember your synth, and wasn't it for Mac only? Yeah. And, and, I, and I wanted a Mac so bad so I could run like all this cool software that was on there. And I think I even saw like a Trent Reznor interview that he said he used your synth. I don't, did you ever see that or hear I didn't see him, no, I didn't see him, but um, I, there was a few bands used to use it actually. It was, it was quite popular at one point. I ended up putting it out of shareware because I, I couldn't, um, for various reasons, I couldn't sort of get into the idea of setting up on my own and co coping with all the distribution and everything at the time because it was like box distribution and the deals were all like 30, 70 or 60, 40, which I didn't, wasn't really happy about. Well, yeah, it was like book publishing back then. You had to pay to get your, you know, stuff and, and the shelves and everything. And But with Shareware, you could send it over uh, BBSs. For those watching who are uh, <laughs> under 30, <laughs> before the internet, there are people... Yeah, but, but just like now, now, nobody paid. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was hard to pay online. First of all, people didn't trust paying, giving their credit card out online, so they'd have to mail in a check mm. to people, to developers mm. like Andy here. And myself, I remember getting uh, checks for shareware where they'd print out the order form for like $15. And I'd take it to the bank from all these checks from around the world. And they're like, what kind of scam are you running? I'm like, it's software over the, over the internet. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Different times. I mean, we made a pittance on that. We really did. It was, but but, but I, at the same time, I got offered another job. So I, it, I was kind of, it was kind of a toss up, a gamble whether I would go and set up on my own, uh, like Propeller did, Propeller Heads did at that time, and now look at them. <laughs> yeah, they're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember meeting Ernst once at a, at a, at a, at a, at a, it was a Meta or somewhere, or it might have been a NAM, having a great chat and like, saying, oh, come to Sweden, come to Sweden, you know. <laughs> well, I never did, that was probably a mistake. <laughs> but, uh, but hey, I, I ended up working you know, in, in the games industry for a while, doing 3D graphics, so, uh, which I also got out of recently. So. Andy actually, an app he developed one like app of the year with, from Apple, didn't it? Or we had several apps of the year. Yeah, yeah. We had lots of editor's choices and an app of the year. We won a BAFTA uh, for one of our apps. They, they were very high quality apps. Um, which cost a lot of money to make. I mean, some of them would cost nearly, you know, nearly half a million or, 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 or several hundred thousand dollars. You know, the most they could charge for them was 10 or 12 pounds at the very most. So very hard to get the money back on that one, sadly. Uh, and eventually the company folded because impossible to keep that kind of quality going on, on iOS. Yes, a lot of people watching, they just assume that everyone who makes apps is just like this millionaire developer. Yeah. The money's yeah. flowing in, but that's not the case. That hasn't yeah. happened since the App Store first came around. Rather than encourage quality, it encourages the opposite. Right, uh, just people uh, looking for a quick buck. 
indeed and 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 and, and just and it's created a culture where customers expect it to be free or for nothing virtually uh which is very hard to combat yeah yeah it's tough you know uh, you know hopefully as ios becomes more and more popular you know ios developers will be able to charge more and earn a living wage as people see the value for quality software yeah yeah i don't know i i can't see it getting any better I, I, I really can't. I think I think it needs to it needs a whole whole new approach to it. Uh, my own personal feeling about it. Oh gosh, well, what do you think that approach would be? What would be some starting points? I don't know. Maybe perhaps a professional app store. <laughs> I, I'm a hundred percent on board with you. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any like passion projects outside of building apps right now? Are you still making music? Oh yeah, I'm. St- I, I, I play play quite regularly in our band and we play and we're, we're, we're setting up a little EDM band too at the moment because we, we used to have one in London but we're, we're going to reform it and bring it back down to the, to the sticks. Yeah, I mean, still play a lot. I still play in the studio a lot, record, do a lot of recording. But I, also I've got a, quite a big Eurorack synth as well. So it's kind of a mixture of the two. Um, oh, you have, you have a modular set up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to send me a picture of that. I, I couldn't help wasting all my money on it. You know? I was going to say that's where all your money's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop. It was getting really addictive. I, had to, I, had to. I was going to say, like, uh, usually it's it's money or a significant other that says, you know, you got to tone it down a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's me or the yeah. sin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there's been some great modules come out recently, especially in the last well, last couple of weeks. And I'm thinking, oh, no, 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 I can't, I can't, you know, keep it away from me, keep it away from me. <laughs> I wrote a little um, app for the DX7 that was probably one of the first genetic algorithms. I mean, I don't think the phrase had even been invented then. Gosh, um, uh, you know, and backing up, what you said was really inspiring. Instead of waiting for the future to happen, you dove right in there and saw the opportunity like, hey, I could get these computers and this DX7 and these keyboards to talk to each other. I could write it myself. It took two patches and it kind of mated them together. <laughs> and it kind of evolved, and evolved them out into, into like 30 odd others. And then you could choose two of the two that you liked and throw them together. Because I mean, FM synthesis was so complicated on the DX7 that I don't think anybody could do it by ear. It just, it just wasn't possible. Uh, yeah, it's funny. I hear I hear people say it's just a DX7. It's not rocket science. I, I'm thinking rocket science is probably easier than programming. Rocket science is, is, is a doddle compared to FM synthesis. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got a particular kind of weird brain to understand how FM works. You've done a good job of marketing layer and getting the name out. Like, do you have any advice for like new developers on how to get attention for their apps? I mean, I'm not very good at marketing, I don't think. I, I, I'm not a marketer. I'm not that marketing personality. I don't have that in my head. I find it quite difficult, to be honest. Uh, I mean, because I don't like, first of all, I don't like lying. I don't, I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> all marketing <laughs> I don't like, liars, according to Seth Godin. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of marketing is about learning how to lie. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, certainly in my experience of, of meeting a lot of marketers. And, uh, I mean, lovely people, but you know, really, really, really floating on a on, on a on a sort of mattress of lies. Uh, <laughs> and knowing how to how to make it, how to make those lies sound absolutely incredible. And I'm I'm very bad at that. I can't do it. I, I even find the claims I make about layer. I think, well, is that true? You know, you know. <laughs> but most of them, yeah, I mean, they are. They are true. You, you can go in certain places. You can send it. You can send out your promo codes to all, to all the bloggers. And I think that's basically what we do. We, 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 we try and give as advance notice as, pos- you know, as much as possible to everybody about what we're doing and where it's, where it's going and what's happening. We send them some graphics and some explanations and some promo codes and say, hey, please talk about it. Uh, it's, you know, it's probably better for developers to contact bloggers themselves versus having a PR agency, because I think bloggers, they want to hear from the developers these days. Exactly. That's what, yes, it's what I'm kind of saying, and, and that's just what we do. And I think that's pretty much all you can do, if you're, especially if you're just a lone developer or very, very small. And I, I've worked for app development houses that have spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on marketing team. Wow. Over the years, you know. 
uh, and had and really, I just think it it didn't have any effect. It had no effect at all at the end of the day, or very very little. And so, and so what's next for you? Can you reveal like some app ideas you have in the future after Layer? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's all, it's all uh, hush hush, or you haven't thought of anything. <laughs> oh, I've thought of a few things. Uh, uh, I am working on something at the moment which is not a synthesizer. What? Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, which may come out this year, hopefully. Um, but also, I've got the next update for Layer, which I'm also working on, kind of in parallel, and that I want to come out later this year. Okay. Um, Can you give us some hints on what's coming for Layer in the future? Uh, it's all about preset generation. Ah, so going back to what you were working on before with the DX7s, but modernized. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, sort of. So yeah, it's not. There's no artificial intelligence involved in it. I, 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 and people. So one of the biggest complaints I get with Layer is how long it takes to program for it because it's so big. It's, it's so huge. So people don't realize they start. They get into it and they start programming, and they think, ah, oh, what they don't understand perhaps is that. It isn't just one synth. <laughs> you're not just programming one synth. You're programming a hundred synths, or, or 20 synths at least, you know, very often. You, you, you can reverse some, if you reverse engineer some of our presets, especially some of Bryce's, they might have 20 or 30 layers in them, and each layer is a synth. Wow. And so, that, it, it, you have to be quite obsessive to, to, to make these presets for this synth. It, it, it's, 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 a, it, it's, it's very big in that sense. I mean, there's a little uh, thread going on in Audiobus at the moment. Okay. About um, very, very nicely making synth presets for Layer, and, uh, which I'm really kind of looking forward to seeing the results, actually. Yeah, you know, uh, the audio bus community, it's, it's so amazing. I think that a lot of apps probably wouldn't exist without that community. Um, yeah. You look at them as a source of inspiration to keep going. Quite funny, isn't it? I, I didn't even realize there was this little community until I, until I released Layer. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was aiming it at a completely different target. It, it was, you know, the target I was aiming at were people like me who, who just want to take some, who just want to lighten their load. Basically, um, uh, 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 because you know, instead of taking a van full of keyboards to a gig, you, you just want to take, you know, if possible, a couple of bags <laughs> instead of a lot quicker, which is the whole point. And I think there's a lot of that. So, and I think Layer is selling into that target audience. It's, it's very successful at selling into that. Nice. Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> and, and so, it must take a lot of time to do all this in addition to, you probably have to do support for your apps yourself and like answer like app store questions like how do you deal with like negative feedback what advice do you have for other developers on on handling that you, you need you need you need rhinoceros armor don't you I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know i i get a lot of flack for even having a free app i can imagine what you deal with oh, wow uh, the, the vitriol is quite incredible isn't it, it, it yeah. I, I, did, I just they, think they act like you killed their firstborn <laughs> oh, isn't it? It, it you just think to yourself Wow, why did you write to me to tell me that? You know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean that's another thing you could give as advice to people just starting up, isn't it? You you have to you know you need plus ten on your on your on your on your sort of magic armor protection because without it you're you're gonna you're gonna sort of melt and just dissolve into a pool of <laughs> of quivering kind of wreck. I think. Uh, yeah, I, I was really really surprised. At, at just the extent that some people can be really nasty. Oh, you don't have to name names, but can, can you give an example of some crazy things people have said to you? You'll, you'll get people who tell you that they know everything, you know nothing at all. <laughs> they, are, they are the fountain of knowledge and you are complete dunce. You don't know what you're doing. And, and they could have done it loads of times better, but didn't for some reason. Um, <laughs> Yeah, people in the or, cheap or, seats or, always or, like to throw or, stones. Or your attempt to the user interface design is somehow insulting to their, their intelligence. And, and you know, so what do you do? I mean, my, my, my approach is to, if someone trolls me, I just ignore them. If you come at me as a troll, you won't get any help at all. You'll just, you'll just go, oh, bye. <laughs> See ya. I'm not interested. And um, so that's my way of dealing with it. 
um, if you come at me and with, with, uh, politely ask for help or even no, not polite, just ask for help and explain why you haven't got things on, like say, go and read the manual. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I will try and help you. you know, and so I do help a lot of people, actually. I mean, yes, I mean, a lot, a probably a good, a good portion of every morning is taken up with tech support. Well, well, part of the reason I can't, I can't tell you what I really think, you know. Oh is, gosh, you know. Well, you part know, of the reason I'm doing this interview series is so people can see like the real people who make the apps. Because uh, I, I don't, you know, this way people can learn that oh, it's just regular people who are working really hard and had to learn this all themselves and are struggling to make these wonderful apps for everyone. And it's not just some faceless corporation, you know, cashing in. No, no, no. You know, that's right, and. and uh, it, it, it is, and, and individuals can be extremely, it can be hurt as well. You know, some things that people can say can be very hurtful. Uh, you know this because you, you're asking me the question. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know. every developer has empathy for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what my advice is, 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 look, is build up your armor. You know, expect this to happen. And um, it sounds like you do have a, a big manual. I actually haven't... You know, I've had. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that was only after I only did that. I said I didn't. I didn't release it with a manual, and that was it. That was it. Why haven't you released a manual? So and then it's why haven't you made any videos? Well, excuse me, I've only you know there's only one of. There's kind of a debate going on whether developers should make either a tutorial video or a manual, or you know which one is more important, or should they make both these days? Well, well yeah, uh, I I think probably in the ideal world you would make both. But to do good manuals and good videos is hard work. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Especially good videos. You know, making videos is a lot of time. I can speak from I, experience. I, I totally underestimated how much work. I mean, I said, yeah, I'll do a video here for this, I'll do videos for that, and I'll do videos for this. And of course, I haven't. And, and the reason I haven't is because it's so, so, you know, the effort needed to do it is enormous. Um, I still plan to do some. Uh, and I've, you know, I've even built up some equipment to do it with. Uh, but it means I have to stop developing and spend a week doing that. Uh, and so I'll probably, you know, you'll, you'll probably will have a little trickle of videos, but nothing like what I was initially planning. Because uh, <laughs> I can't do both. I can't work and, and do videos. So, and at the moment, is we're not, you know, the income, like I say, keeping us afloat, but it's not making us enough money to pay somebody you know, a couple of grand to make videos for us. Yeah, yeah, video making is super expensive. Yeah, I think they make more than app developers. <laughs> yeah, everyone makes more than app developers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I could probably earn more money as a musician. Oh, let's not go too far. <laughs> <laughs> now you jumped the shark. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny, oh, that is funny. Cool, so, um, do you have any final thoughts for the people watching? Anything you want to leave people with? I think iOS music making is really interesting. I mean, I, I, the reason I chose iOS as a platform is because I think it's a fantastic platform. Um, I mean, I could, I could be writing Mac apps. And I'm not even tempted to port Layer to the Mac yet. Wow. Wow. That's I, 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 well, again, because it, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, isn't it? I mean, basically, you have to rework the whole user interface. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, I, and I didn't want to design an interface that would be <clears throat> compromised by the fact that it was trying to be both. Uh, so I concentrated on the touch side of things. Um, and I think iOS is gonna be really big if, if it keeps going uh, and if we can keep, keep it going. I think one day it will be really big. It, it hasn't, it hasn't, and it cannot replace the laptop at the moment. There's, 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 <laughs> let me, in my, in my belief, you know, anyone who says, oh, I can do it all on here and I, can, I, can, I don't need to use a laptop anymore. Well, you're not doing the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Matthew Fetcher. Thanks for watching. AudioKit is a free and open source project. You can learn more at audiokitpro.com.